can AI program your CNC machines today? In this video, we're gonna look at ChatGPT and see what it can do. First up, a little info on what we're looking at here. ChatGPT is a tool created by OpenAI. OpenAI is an artificial intelligence research and development company with the goal of creating systems that will outperform humans. ChatGPT is the most recent program they have released for testing, but they have also developed the text-to-picture AI system called DALI. DALI will create an image based on the text prompts you give it, and even in its infancy, DALI has caused quite the reaction in the art and graphics creation worlds. In fact, the picture used in the thumbnail for this video was created by DALI. Image creation from text won't help us much in the machining world, but ChatGPT might. ChatGPT is a trained AI model that interacts in a conversational way. Put it simply, it's Google on steroids. If you ask Google, what is Mastercam? It will return some websites that may provide the answer you're looking for. ChatGPT, it will directly answer your question and even provide some insights into the answer. As you can see here, ChatGPT is letting us know that Mastercam is used to create toolpaths for various types of machining operations such as milling, turning, and wire EDM. It then goes on to explain that Mastercam includes a wide range of tools and features for creating and editing toolpaths, etc. You can even ask it follow-up questions or even ask that the answer is explained differently. In the example on screen, I ask it to explain in fewer words, and you can see it condenses its answer quite nicely. Now it's just stating that Mashcam is used to create toolpaths for machining operations and generates machine code for CNC machines. I then ask it to explain it to me as if I'm a five-year-old, and then you can see it really simplifies its answer. It helps people who work in factories make really cool parts for lots of different things. I then ask it to explain to me as if I was a PhD student, and it goes into much greater depth. This question and answer stuff is interesting, but not earth shattering. Is there something more ChatGPT can do? Yes, but we should point out that there are some limitations. ChatGPT is not able to browse the internet. It cannot provide advice or make recommendations. It also cannot access external programs. So unfortunately, ChatGPT cannot run Mastercam for you, but it does know several programming languages and it even knows G-code. Okay, so let's give this G-code a world here. I've got uh, ChatGPT on one side, and I've got Simcoe edit on the other to backplot whatever G code uh, we can get out of it. So let's see what we can make here. And I'm gonna intentionally make this vague. So you know if you're ever programming a computer, you have to tell it exactly what to do step by step. If you wanted to have it make you a peanut butter sandwich, you would say open the bread bag, take out one piece of bread, open the peanut butter jar, etc. You have to tell it every single thing to do. So what I've done here is I've only said, make a program that drill four holes. I've left everything else for it to interpret and here's what we're getting. It is a G-code program. Uh, there is some things missing, but that is the beauty of this chat GPT is you can tell it that it's missed something and it will correct itself. So for example, here, we'll start at the very top. We've got G90 set. Uh, it's moving to X0, Y0, Z0 for some strange reason. Obviously no, no cutter length compensations have been applied yet. And then it hops into a can cycle. Now I've done this a few times and in previous operations or previous attempts, it did not immediately come out with a can cycle. It was doing it longhand. So that's interesting to see that it's actually doing can cycles right off the go here. So I'm going to tell it that it's, it's missed the tool call and we'll see what it comes back with. Again, I'm going to be vague and just see what it can take from what I'm, I'm telling it to do. So I've told it just simply, you missed the tool call. And here it is now sticking in the T01M06 into the program. And you can see as it's explaining the code to us, it gives us the code and it also gives us an explanation of what it is that it's trying to do. Uh, so what I see here in this one here, there's a lot of comments going on and I don't personally want to see the comments in the program. Um, I can understand the G code just fine. So I'm going to tell it the, to uh, remove the comments from, from the G code. So again, it's understood what a comment is just by me simply asking about it. We are still missing some things in our program, but this somewhat resembles what a G code program should look like. Let's grab this code, throw it over into uh, Simcoe and see what it does. So I've got a button here, copy code. Let's paste this over into Simcoe. I'm already in my back plot. Let's just zoom out so it fixes this here or it fits in. And yeah, it's making motion, but it's not, uh, it's not doing what we want it to do. Now throughout your session, you can keep on correcting chat GPT so that the resulting code is what you're after. It can be a bit of a back and forth. And as you can see in the background here, I had to try and uh, finesse the results quite a bit. And we eventually did get somewhere close. 
So after a bit of fighting with, uh, with the program here, we've finally gotten somewhat uh, close to a useful program. So we've got our tool length compensation being called out. We've got the can cycle being called, and then just the positions of the holes called after it. And if we stick that over into our NC editor to backplot it, and I make a few tweaks, a few minor tweaks, uh, we get some code that will actually run. So it's obvious that this program is not tra trained in G code. Um, I think they've probably focused more on other programming languages that are more often used. Uh, but there is some other neat things you can do in here with G code. And that's when you get into using some variables or even macros. So given this same program here, let's tell it to uh, use variables for the X and Y locations of, of these holes. So again, it's kind of missed the mark, but it's still somewhat accomplishing what I've asked. It knows the variables it can use and it knows how to assign them. Did it do it correctly? Uh, not so well, but again, let's take it one step farther and, and get this into an actual uh, macro now, and get it into doing some sort of uh, calculation. So I've asked it to create a program to create drilled holes that are evenly spaced and that, that spacing of the drilled holes is controlled by a variable. Again, it's missed the mark a little bit. You can see here's the program it's created. And I plug this into Simcoe and try and run it, and it doesn't do a whole lot. It gets one hole drill, but uh, we didn't get the holes that we were after. Um, and the loop seems to have broken down midway through. So as far as G code goes today, uh, not so good. Um, but obviously you can see uh, a glimpse into what this could actually do if it was actually trained uh, in G code. So another popular software that uh, machinists use is Excel. And let's, let's try something quick in there and see if we can get a better result with something more common like an Excel VBA program. So let's ask it to uh, maybe look at values in a column and see if it can find matching values within that column. So here's the code it's made us. It made us this uh, program. Let's copy this up and we'll open this up inside of uh, Visual Basic, plug it in. And here's the program it gave us. I made an alteration here just so it looks at row C instead of row A. And you can see I've got some values here and I've got uh, two number 45s. So if I run this program, there we go. It highlights the, uh, the duplicate number uh, 45. So there you go. I was able to create this, this program here in VBA with knowing nothing other than telling it uh, what I was trying to do in plain English. So I guess it's safe to say that as of today, uh, G-code programmers, your jobs are still safe. But no, this stuff is moving extremely quickly. And before you know it, you'll be able to make uh, programs just by simply typing in uh, text commands on what it is that you want. Should also point out, uh, OpenAI has just released its newest piece of software. It's called Point E, and Point E takes the DALL-E concept of pictures and expands it into 3D objects. So now you're going to be able to type in words and create 3D objects from that. So I'm looking forward to playing with this a little bit once I can wrap my head around how to implement it. But I think uh, the first little bit of this would be fun to do with 3D printing you know, throw in some words, it creates a model for you, and then you go over and uh, 3D print it out. But then again, where this ends up in two, five, ten years from now, uh, sky's the limits.